Hi everybody. Welcome to Calix Data. This video is gonna be our first video on Python programming. So we're gonna be doing introduction to Python programming. Okay, these are things we're gonna be needing for you. Data science and machine learning <coughs> classes. So uh I'm not gonna go into the rudiments of installation of Python, okay. I'll just tell you what to do. If you go to this website right here, if you go to uh, <coughs> this website, okay, if you go to anaconda.com, you, <coughs> you will be able to download. Anaconda is a distributor, okay? It's a distributor. So when you download Anaconda in your system, uh, by the way, it's like, it's like 400, 500 megabyte. So when you download Anaconda in your system, <coughs> by default, it comes with Python, Python 3, I guess, 3.7 or 3.8, okay. <clears throat> Alright, so when you do that, then it also comes with the uh, the editors that you can use, the IDEs, it comes with VS Code, with Spider and Jupyter Notebook, so you are covered. Once you download this and you store it on your system, you are good to go. Um, <coughs> sorry. If you have Android mobile phone, you can also download this application on the Google Play Store where you can be able to run Python code on your phone on the go. Alright, that, that being said, there are some things I'm going to be teaching to you as an introduction to Python programming. Alright, <coughs> but before I go into this, I would like to go into <coughs> why do you want to even study Python programming? Why do you want to learn Python programming? What, what, do you, what does Python have to offer? <coughs> a quick uh, overview of what you can gain by learning Python. Okay, Python is is debatably, okay, arguably the most popular programming language in the world right now. Okay, because its application is vast. Okay, it's vast. You can can do <coughs> you can do practically anything with Python. Okay, you can do anything with Python. You can. A lot of things you can do with Python. Okay. All right. Why Python is uh, is one of the programming languages you can use for data science work. You can use R language as well. Okay. You can do much more with Python than data science work. Okay. So let's go into it now quickly. You can do web development. Okay. You can do web development with Python. Python has some libraries, some thought libraries like Django. Okay. Django, Flask, and so on. With these libraries, you can create a very beautiful website with Python. Okay, so it's not only about data science. You can also do web development with Python. Okay, quickly. Another thing is that <coughs> with Python, you can do gaming. Okay, you can develop game, 2D, 3D games. This this library right here, the Pygame library helps you to develop uh, games with Python, okay? You can do, you can develop a, a very nice game with Python, okay? Quickly, of course, this is part of the reason why we are here. We are here on this channel, Calix Data, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, that's AI. We can, we can use Python to do this. Of course, we're gonna be doing machine learning on this channel. We're gonna be exhausting everything about machine learning okay just by the way you can just ensure that you like this video and you subscribe to this channel okay because we're going to be exhausting a lot of things on this channel all right another thing that python can do is data science of course data science is is is, is, is a science of making sense of data okay using data to solve problems okay to solve real world problems okay data science uh python helps you to carry out Data science work, okay. There are several libraries, pandas, numpy, and other libraries, scikit-learn, <coughs> that enhances your data science work with Python. <coughs> okay, visualization is another thing that you can use Python for. Okay. Uh, you know, when we say data visualization, of course, you can use some other tools. Of course, you can use Excel. You can use Tableau, you can use Power Bi. Of course, all these things will be taught on this channel. Power Bi, Tableau, Excel, SPSS. But with Python, you can be able to query the language, uh, query the data. You can do much more, okay? Now, 
it's a picture speaks more than a thousand words as they say so Python is useful for data visualization and um, what is uh, creating desktop applications okay you can create desktop applications with Python okay and we have beautiful libraries that you can use Kiwi and so several other libraries like that, that you can use for creating desktop applications with Python so the usefulness the application of Python itself is vast and then you can web scraping towards the end of, of maybe as we progress okay we're going to be doing web scraping on this channel we're going to be because what, what, what's web scraping web, web scraping is a way it's a way of uh, getting data from websites for maybe for analysis of anything you want to do okay maybe you want to use you want to get the sales data and you want to get sales data from uh, let's say amazon for example okay you can it, you, of course you, you you can go to amazon and start typing everything one by one on your excel sheet or everything but with the aid of web scraping just by clicking a few buttons okay writing few codes and clicking few buttons will be good you'll be good okay uh, we thought libraries like beautiful soup web scripting is made possible with python okay quickly then of course python can do several other things you can use it for business applications audio and video applications okay card applications and so on okay the application of python is 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 is, 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 is as far as you can imagine okay. The first thing I would like to see, I would like to talk about on this is uh, is called is data type, okay? Data type. In Python, we have several data types, okay? Uh, we have we have float, okay? We have float. Float is a data type in in Python. All right, all right. By the way, we use we use this uh, this sign, this hash sign. Okay, for a comment, you want to write in your code, you know, write a comment. You put this sign before whatever you want to write. Okay, so that you you you, you won't have one error. So we have float. If I write, uh, let's say two no five divided by two. All right, this is a float. Why? Because it's a decimal. It's not a whole number. Anything that, that that is not a whole number in Python is a float. Now these things are important because we are going somewhere, and you're going to be needing some of these. But all of these these things, okay, as we progress. All right. <clears throat> I think that that's cool. That's cool. That's simple enough. And then another data type that we have is uh, the integer data type. Integer data type. Integer is a whole number, okay? One, two, three, four, any whole number, okay, is integer. Alright? That's another data type that we have. And we have another very important data type, okay, that I'll just quickly touch, then we'll move on, is string. Alright. Now, we all know that computer or machines doesn't understand human they only understand zeros and ones, okay? Binaries, that's what they call it. Now, in, string is a way of typing or, or, or putting in human language into the computer and making the computer uh, output such language. And to do that, you must put a quote, okay? You can use a double quote or a single quote. For example, if I write if I write uh, my name, all right, my name, oh, I can spell. My name is Maxine, My name is Maxine. Now, if I run this code, I will have an error. Of course, you can see the error. Now, the only way I can I can write this code without having an error is to put a string, to put a comma, uh, sorry, a quote around this okay put a quote double quote around it then it's output this that hey my name is max so when you put to type a text or a word you need to put now if i put a single quote 
her name is Mabel. Okay, you can put a single quote around this, and then we are good to go. Okay, it's without put this as her name is Mabel. Okay. Now the last thing I would like to show you before I go into the next thing is if you want to write, if I write this is Bola's Biro, this is Bola's Biro. Now, if I put a single quote here and here, I will have an error. Okay, why? Because I need an apostrophe. Okay, <coughs> I have an apostrophe here. Put uh, a double quote around this. Okay, put a double quote here and a double quote here okay if i do this then i have my desired result okay in this situation you cannot put a single quote outside all right to achieve that hello welcome to part two of this uh first module of introduction to python programming so we're gonna be going, we're going to numeric operators right now. So our numeric operators is like what is known in mathematics, okay? Your multiplications, your additions, and the rest, plus few others in Python, okay? So, for example, to write exponential, okay? Exponentiation, okay? Exponentiation in Python. Have to use uh, double asterisk. Like three to write them down to write three raised to part two. It's gonna be like like this. Okay. Double asterisk. Then if I enter this to output the results, that's three raised to part two three times three. Alright. That's where to write exponentiation in Python. Okay. I can as well say five raised to part three. So that is where to write exponentiation. Then the next thing is what we call quotient. Quotient. Okay. Now what quotient does is that it returns the number of times or a number goes in another number. Okay. How do I mean? If I write <coughs> now, we use we use what, what we call floor division for quotient. This floor division. So, by the way, if I if I write if I write uh, let's say twenty, and I put this and I put let's say three and I enter this. Now, what we have is six because three can only go in twenty six times. That's like eighteen. Okay. Now. Quotients we all, we always return a whole number. It will not return uh, a float. Okay, it will return an integer. Okay, so you can have uh, let's say twelve in uh, five two. All right. So that we call quotient, and we use floor division for quotient. Now another numeric operator that is very useful in. Uh, in Python is remainder. Okay, remainder. Wow, remainder. Re now remainder is like a uh, opposite of of uh, quotient. Remainder will bring you to show you when a number goes in a number, how many the, the, the many value that, that that's what it should bring. Okay. I will use a modulo operator, what we call in our normal mathematics as a, a percentage. Okay, now if it's if I write twenty, um, let's say three. Okay, if I enter this, now it's showing two. Why? Because after three goes in twenty, what remains is two. 
okay <clears throat> you can see i have like let's say 55 uh and seven six so like quotient remainder we always bring an integer not a float okay shall that in mind we use a uh, floor division for a quotient and we use a uh, what do you call it now we use um modular operators for remainders all right now you can do normal normal operators you can do your three times I say three times five okay normal operators you can use your let's say 22 divided by 3 all right so we have a float here so you can use the normal operators apart from quotients and mod and uh, and remainders okay hi guys welcome to part three of the first module of this tutorial introduction to python programming by the way we're using python 3 not python 2 okay uh we're going to be talking about the input and output in in, uh, in in python now in python we use the word print okay to output anything you want to output okay so for example i can say print Remember our string now. Print uh, John. Okay. Now, if I write if I write John like this, it will print it out. Why? Because I'm using Jupyter not, not, Notebook, and uh, if you're using other IDEs, you must specify the word print. But if I'm if you're using Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook like this, you can you can bypass this word print, but the standard in in a Python programming is to use the word print, okay, to output anything you want to output. So, if I say print uh, three uh, three raised to power. Where are you? Ouch. Print three raised to power five divided by see that so we have this beautiful output so use the word print now use the word print to output anything you want to output in python and lastly in other words we're talking about output and input now if you want to if you want a call to action like you want you want to write a program where somebody needs to impute something okay you want to write a program where <coughs> you must write, impute your name maybe a web a web program that somebody needs to impute his name <coughs> use the word impute okay impute in python so if i write impute all right by the way you must always put uh, uh parentheses after your print or impute all right, impute. Please enter your name. Okay. Now, if I run this code, I'll have this string. This string will appear to the user. Please enter your name. Then the person will have a block to enter his name. If I run this code now, see that please enter your name. Then I can enter my name. Okay, Maxine. All right. Then the output comes. All right. I can use single quotes like I said earlier. I can use double quotes. Okay. Uh, what else can I do with input? I can, I can input. Uh, I say input. Uh, input uh, a number. Okay. See? Enter a number. Okay. So I can enter a number like this. Output. Oh, I want you to know something very important in this code, in this impute and impute impute stuff. What I have here is not a number; it's a string. 
you know, available out, uh, in string and integer. Now, the output here cannot be used as numeric value because you know, it's not a numeric value, it's a string. Okay, it's like it's like your text, it's like your name. Okay, you can see the quotes around it. Now, I can put the word int to get this to get uh, to specify that you want a user to impute an integer and not a text you have to put it like an integer okay <coughs> if i if i specify int okay int and then impute all right or down impute then i have i can can specify i can say please enter a number okay so if i run this the user must enter a number maybe like age 25 or 23 <coughs> now we, you have here you have an integer okay you, i can use this integer in in uh, i can use this integer in a calculation all right okay now how do i use it in this integer i'll just copy this code okay I've not, I've not shown you that, so there might be. Let, let me just show you, okay? Of course, we still get there. No, don't worry. But it's an integer, so I specify this as it's an integer. You enter your name. Now you must enter an integer. If I run this code again, if I put a text, if I put maxim, I'll get, I'll get an error. Okay, because I've already told the system that I want an integer. Okay. Hi guys, welcome to part four of this first module on uh, introduction to Python programming. Now we're going to be doing string operations. Of course, we talk about what strings are and what there are data types in Python. Okay, and some other languages. Now, what can you do with string? That's what we're going to be doing. The first thing you can do is we're going to concatenate or concat. All right, you can concat strings, okay? For example, if I write the string, it's a, if I say the spam, if I write spam, okay, if I run this, of course I will have spam as an output, but I can join this spam with another thing, and say spam and, uh, let me say egg, okay? If I run this, see what I got, spam egg, so I concat, I, I concatenate, the two strings together okay that's good then i can choose to concat i say uh say dough dough and use this the plus sign and whatever what, what, what can i concat with it let me say no all right so you can do that you can choose to concat now by the way i'm just making those things up okay they're not real world actually the do is real but don't know i don't know what the, what don't know is <coughs> i can concat uh anything i want to concat punk okay you can join as many as possible to it so <coughs> that's a way to concat string operations in python okay now you can you can as well do multiplication with it. You can say print. It's a print egg. Okay, print egg. And I say print egg times four. Now on this, so we have egg 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 egg. All right. So you can you can choose to do that. You can do those with uh, string operations. Okay. By the way, of course, now let me just quickly do this last one before I finish this uh, this part. Now, this this number here is not a number. It's a string, okay? Of course, because because we have string around it, it's not a number anymore. You can carry out multiplication or division or, or any operation with it, okay? So I can, use to, I can choose to concat this and uh, not underscore, please.
Right. I can use to concur this with. I can. I can choose to concur with uh, forty-four days. Okay. <coughs> so four days, I, I guess. So you can concur anything they want to concur. Okay. All right. That is it for this this part. Hey guys, welcome to part 5 of the first module of this tutorial, Introduction to Python Programming. We're going to be doing type con conversion today. Okay, now I've told you what data types are. Okay, we talk about float, int, boolean type, of course, and some other data types like that. You can convert one, di one data type to another apart from string. Of course, you can convert string to an int. Or float. Now, for example, if you have, if you have, for example, if I have, uh, uh, if I say print, if I say print, um, four thirty-five. Now, this is this, this this is a string, of course, because because you've seen that it's a string. Now, if I say, I can convert this string to, let's say, an int. Why? Because it's it's easier for me to do this because this this has this of course this 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 is a number that's converted to a string by applying a code around it. So if I if I put in int uh if I put in there and I run this now this is now a number. Let's do it like this. Int. 44 all right so you can convert a number an integer sorry a string to an integer you can as well convert uh, an integer a string to a float okay you can convert it to a float of course you can see this this is a float okay all right, so that's how to convert type conversion. How to convert from one data type to another. Remember that you cannot convert. Now I can say I can say int. I can say int John. Okay. I can say this. Okay, because you have an error. All right. The final one I can show you. I can say print. Okay, print uh, 16. All right, you can see this. And I'll convert this to an int. Okay. I'll convert this to an int. Okay. Um, you can see int 30. Okay. 33, 30, whatever, okay, plus, mm, where are you, float, 44, now I have an output, 74.3, now it's, it's a float because we have floats here, alright, so that's good, that's that for the chapter, Hey guys, welcome to part six of the of the first module of this tutorial, introduction to Python programming. We're gonna be treating uh, variables. <coughs> now, variables are ways of storing data in a name so that it can be used <coughs> in another place in the code. Okay. Now, if you have this number here, let's say I have fifty-five. It's it for me to use this number again. I have to type 55 again but if I use if I say y equals to 55 I've already assigned the y that whatever you see y just like in mathematics whatever you see y y equals to 55 so I can easily use y in <coughs> sorry I can easily use y in, uh, in, in, in the code somewhere I can say y then the modulo operator Okay, four around this. See now that I 
I can use y somewhere else. So y here is a variable. Okay, so I store the data in y. I can use it later on. You can also use um, you can also store string. Okay, it's not only uh, it's not only what they call it. It's not uh, only int that you can store. You can store string. Like I say. Go to school, Roger. All right, so you can say as a print, of course, as a print X, I'll have that. Well, I don't know. Oh, I think I use capture letter. No, okay. <coughs> so I store this whole string in a, in a variable called x. All right, so you can store both strings. <coughs> An integer in a variable. Hi guys, welcome to part seven of this module Introduction to Python Programming. We're going to be doing in place operators. Okay, now in place of operators uh, is a fancy way of writing writing the code. Okay. <clears throat> okay that being said if I write something like this if I say uh, I equals to okay I equals to 2 5 okay this is a variable now I can still say um, I can say I equals to I plus <clears throat> plus five plus three print I I eight. Why is I eight? Because we see that. The first line of code says i is five. Then the next line says i now is not equal to i plus three, which is five plus three. Printing i now will give me eight. Now, the implicit operator says is it's a fancy way of writing the same code above here. Now I can write this code as say, let's say y equals to two, equals to two. Okay. Now I can say now the y y plus okay y plus equals to four now print y so this line here instead of writing y equals to y plus four I can write it like this okay i can write it like this so, so i can use this in place this is a fancy way of writing the same code above here like this okay that's what implicit operator is. By the way, I can use I can use minus. Okay, so I, don't, I don't have to use that. I can use minus, right? Okay, so I can use multiplication. Any operator that I want. Okay, I can use multiplication. Okay, I can use the floor division. I guess. Okay. Can use modular operator. Okay. So that is it. That's it. 